everyone, and welcome to the webinar today. Uh, we are going to be going over real-time jobs for business objects. Uh, you know, as we find the importance of uh, real-time data, uh, it just makes business decisions that much more uh, instant and um, that much more uh, valid. Um, we're going to have our uh, consultant, uh, Andrew Kreider, he is uh, from our innovation office, and he's going to be covering a lot of that. I always like to give our uh, WCI mission statement here, um, just to let you know where we're coming from as a partner of yours. That's how we like to view ourselves, um, and that we're not necessarily looking for uh, the short term. Uh, we're looking towards long term relationships, and you know, really figure out uh, your business intelligence uh, world, and you know. Um, we've been doing it for over 15 years, uh, since 1998. Uh, back then it was pretty much uh, you know, custom dashboards, crystal reports, those kind of nature, and as the industry and technology has grown, so have we. Uh, 2010, 2011, we've won Partner of the Year from SAP. Uh, we are hoping to win it uh, for this last year, but they have not announced it yet, so uh, we'll let you know when we know. <laughs> um, with that being said, let me turn it over to Andrew, and uh, we will go through our presentation today about real-time jobs. Thank you, Trent. Uh, my name is Andrew, and as uh, Trent said, I'm the head of the Office of Integration. Um, what we do here in this office is that we tend to show um, what our uh, unique ways to kind of handle data. So I want to run through this little presentation real quick. Um, and uh, let me uh, shift to this monitor. Here we go. Uh, so what real-time data service jobs are are the ability to grab real-time data that's generated through uh, web services and the like uh, to kind of bring new data, fresh data, into your electronic data warehouse. So one of the things that you could do is that you could validate data before it entered your electronic data warehouse. Uh, you can use it to test and uh, test data before it's inserted in there on the simple entry of a web service call or a entry from a website. Uh, you can also consume data from a whole sorts of service-oriented architecture. One of our recent projects is that we were working with a facility that was tracking people uh, via Wi-Fi counters and Bluetooth counters and actual sensors and doors and that sort of thing, which would in turn kick off a web service, which would then in turn insert information into an electronic data warehouse. And then again, you can insert it with any real-time processes that you have, uh, whether you wanted to bring in from an RSS feed, uh, whether you wanted to bring in Twitter feeds or Facebook feeds, which is one of the things that we're looking at helping our clients do. Actually, anything connected to the web that can create a web service, uh, you can integrate into data service and bring in through a real-time job. So what real-time data service jobs do is it integrates external service calls into data services 4.0. Um, you manage them and activate them using the access server and the data service management console. And the only real uh, requirement for this is that you require both an incoming XML message and a message that you can send out through an XML uh, that is a technical requirement to set up a real-time job. And we'll look at that in just one minute. Finally, uh, what we're going to look at here is kind of a diagram of what's actually happening. So you can see on the left-hand side, your external application sends a message to the data service access server the access server reads this incoming message and delegates it to the proper service or the real-time job that you've created. And that service calls, uh, service providers actually calls a real-time job. And then when it's complete, you send the message back to the access server, which in turn returns it to the external application. Now the demonstration that we're going to give today is just a simple yes and no, uh, whether it was success or not. Um, but what you can do is you can pass data back to your external application. So you can return data um, 
through your data cleanse or through a filtration process or anything like that um, at the data service level, so not only can you return it, information and insert it into your electronic data warehouse, but you can also send it back to the application so that you can then use that in your own custom application uh, based on input data. So what we're going to do now is we're now going to um, show actually how to construct a real-time job. So you can see here, this is a very simple real-time job that we've created. We're grabbing a weather forecast information from uh, the NOAA website. Um, and as you can see, uh, the, part, the job has four different parts. Uh, the real-time process beginning, which is automatically created by data services when you create a real-time job. The end process, which is what's going to happen at the end of each uh, at the end of each job. Um, and these are both these are the first and last steps that are required for a real-time job. And then we have two data flows. We have a, uh, a real-time weather data flow, which is going to bring an XML message in and we're using it to stage some data. You could also set a filter to filter the data coming in or set different flags or insert it into different tables. And then we have an outgoing message, which is outputting an XML message back to our data service application, our real-time application, letting us know that we've completed the job. Now it's important that you can put anything in between these two data flows but your, your real-time job must begin with an XML source message and must end with an XML message target. So let's go ahead and create a new real-time job, and I'll show you exactly how this is constructed. So the first step is to go to our job in our local object library, and we're going to create a real-time job. When you first open it, you can see that the real-time process begins and step in. These are programmatic things that data service is using to determine what is best. I'm going to create a new data flow here. I'm going to call it step one. And in this, we've created a number of XML messages. So we're going to go ahead and grab our weather and bring it in. And we're going to make this an XML message source. We're going to then use a query. We're going to use create a temporary table. And we're going to change our data store. We're going to call this real-time webinar target. And then join the components up, and in our query, we can then see the XML from the XSD. I'm just going to bring some of these things over. We're going to bring longitude, latitude, location, station ID, temperature uh, in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Bring that over. And then we're going to go back and we're going to come into our weather. And we're going to give it a test file just to make sure that uh, we can run the job. <coughs> and this KDSW is a copy of this weather XML message. So now we can see in our query we're going to pass along some information into our table. And we're going to come back to our job. We're going to create another data flow. We call this repeat real time. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do uh, create users message out. We're going to make this a target. We're going to place a query in front of it. Now, as I said before, you could put anything here that you wanted. If you wanted to pass out some data from a table based on a previous transformation, you wanted to filter this data somehow and then feed only that filter data in. You can do that as well. Right now, I'm just interested in letting know my uh, my 
uh, web service know that I was successful. I'm just going to create a row generation so that our query has the input. And I'm going to pass in um, just this test string right here, which essentially is just going to be um, success. So now you can see that we have a real time step one that has that begins with an XML message source and another data flow that ends with an XML target out. We're going to come back to our job right here. We're going to go ahead and validate it. And actually, before we do that, we're going to also give this an XML test file to write to. Save. Yes. We're going to delete and recreate the file. And we come back to our data service job. We're going to run it. Okay. So now we can see they completed successfully and then move one row in because we only have one source. We're going to come back to our job, navigate to our step one, and we're going to look at the data here. And we see that there is no data in that original source, so nothing was written in. Now, as I said, there's a number of different things that you can do here. So, for example, we come to our transforms what we can do, and we're going to pop this out so that we can actually look at it together. Using your data quality, you can decide on what data cleanses that you want, right? So you can cleanse the data coming in. You can do a reverse geocoder. So from a, a application, you can pass in a latitude and longitude, and you can return a street and state address. You can do a global address cleanse to make sure that something is correct. You can also do a match transform, uh, which gives you a level of uh, whether one entry inserts, enters another for match probability. Uh, this is great if you're using unstructured data, or if you have data out in the field, or from a data entry standpoint, that you want to make sure whether it matches or doesn't match one of your uh, previous uh, entries in your electronic data warehouse before submitting it from a website. Um, and then using uh, the U.S. regulatory address cleanse, you can do the same thing to kind of transform a entry into something that's recognized by the USPS to maintain mailing lists, contact lists, and that sort of thing. And then you can create your own user-defined data quality um, to kind of work there as well. So any data, so any web service call that you can make can result in a real-time job, which opens the applications to not what can I do, but what would I like to do. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Trent and see if we have any questions. Thank you, Andrew. And let's uh, put up our information here, and that way. If anyone needs to, uh, you can go ahead and uh, send us an email offline if you have any uh, real specific questions or um, anything of that nature. We also are always looking for uh, new webinar topics. So if there's anything that you think uh, would be very interesting to you or to the community in general for business intelligence, please feel free and send uh, your uh, input. Uh, with that being said, um, Andrew, I have uh, one question here. Um, for real-time jobs, how how would you go about uh, getting that within the business objects uh, software package? Sure. So the real-time jobs is a, a component available for data services. So data services would be a, a prerequisite software for you to use this with. And you can integrate that with your 4.0 uh, install as well, so that you can manage everything from the central management console or the data services management console. 
Perfect. Uh, that's all the questions that we have for today. I uh, want to thank everyone for coming on board and uh, checking out our webinar. If you, uh, again, have any suggestions for future webinars or any other questions for us, uh, our email addresses are up there. Uh, our next webinar is going to be March 12th, and uh, we'll be covering Explorer, so please look for that. And uh, thank you, and have a great rest of the week.